Today, we're diving into the details of flow ratio in Creality Print 5. Understanding this can really help you get the best prints possible, so let's get started. Now, first things first, what exactly is flow ratio? Well, in simple, simple terms, the flow ratio controls the amount of filament that's extruded through the nozzle. It's a crucial parameter that can affect the quality, uh, the strength, the accuracy of your prints. Now, it sounds complicated, but it's really not. Not, not with Creality Print 5. They provide the tools to easily dial in our flow ratio, and that's exactly what we're going to do. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. If you're looking for parts beyond the capabilities of your printer, visit PCB Way's 3D Printing Gateway. Just upload your file and choose from their large collection of filaments and take your project from prototype to production. From PCBs to 3D printing, look to PCBWay.com for unmatched precision. Visit them today at PCBWay.com. I'm going to dial in this freemover.net apple green PLA plus hashtag not sponsored. I'm going to use it on my Ender 3 V3 SC. Now I do this for each new filament type and brand I get and I also do it for each printer I have. I also do this for different slicers. Filament from different suppliers may not respond the same. They each have their own recipe. So PLA from say brand A is not going to be the same as PLA from brand B. You're going to want to have some different material profiles for different brands. The entire process is pretty easy. It, it doesn't take long and it's well worth the effort. So let's go ahead and jump into Creality Print 5 and get started. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure the first thing is that we are on the printer we are working with. I want to work on my Ender 3 V3 SE. So I'm going to switch over to that, and I will be using the textured PI plate, so I'm good there. Most importantly, what you want to do is make sure you are on the filament you want to work with. So we're going to come over here on the right side, and where it says PLA. I'm going to switch this. I'm on generic PLA. I want to continue to work on my profile for the free mover PLA. I'm going to click that. And now that's loaded. Now this next part couldn't be any easier if we tried. So we come up here where the Creality logo is in the upper left hand corner. We click there and we go to calibration. And we're going to click on pass one. And right away, it throws this into our prepare. It's already sliced it for us. So we'll see these nine blocks. And you'll notice that they're numbers 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Then we got minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20. What we are going to do is print this out. And we are going to see which one has the smoothest top surface. And then we're going to use that to set up for pass two. Now, another thing is it kicked us right to the preview mode. If you go back to prepare, you'll notice there's nothing there. And when you try to come back to preview, well, you just basically lost everything. You get a warning. So what you want to do is come up. First, you want to go to prepare. And you want to go to file and start a new project. It'll get you out of calibration mode. Okay, so we're on a new project. Our printer is the same, our bed sheet's the same, and we are still on the free mover PLA. Let's do this again. Go ahead, calibration, pass one. And we can go ahead and we'll print this out and we'll take a look at what the results are. Looking at these results, both 0 and minus 5 look pretty good. Minus 5 is looking a little smoother to me, so I'm going to go ahead with minus 5. Now, if you run into a situation where you aren't sure which one of the two to pick, pick the larger one. Let's jump back into Creality Print and update our profile with this result. Okay, so... Now that we know which one we want to work with, in our case, minus five, we felt that had the smoothest top surface. 
what do we do with it? Well, this is where it gets to be fun. It's pretty easy. What we do is we come up here to our PLA material. I'm going to click on that. And all the way over here, we have a pencil icon on the right side. I'm going to click that. That's going to put us into edit mode. I always turn on my advanced features. Over here on the left side of the screen, you want to make sure that you do have the filament you're working with highlighted. Real easy to make the mistake and click on something else. Make sure you're on the one you want to work with. Now, we want to change our flow ratio. That 0.98. What we need to do is use a little bit of math right now. And what the formula is, is our old flow which is 0.98. We're going to multiply that by 100 plus the modifier. In our case, it was minus 5. So 100 plus minus 5 is 95. We're going to multiply that by 0.98. And that's going to give us um, 93.1. And then we're going to divide that by 100. You can write this formula down. I have it on the screen. And our new flow ratio is going to be 0.931. So I'm going to change this to 0.931. And then I'm going to save it. And it tells me this preset already exists. Yeah, I already know that. I'm just updating it. And that's all there is to going through pass one. Now what we got to do is pass two. Let's go back. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select new project. I'm going to come up, click on calibration and do pass two. Now the reason I went to a new project instead of going directly to pass two was because I wanted any calibration uh, settings out of there. That may have been set. I'm not sure if there are any or not, but it just this way I know I'm working with a a clean mob, a clean setup. I'm still in my free mover. I can you see that I have my flow ratio came with everything. Now we have 10 blocks instead of nine this time. Our numbers are a little bit tighter before everything incremented by five or minus five. This time it's incrementing by one. Uh, actually, it's all incrementing by negative one. So we're going to go ahead, just like we did before, we're going to print this off and we're going to see which one gives us the smoothest top surface. Let's go ahead and print and see how we do. Looking at these results, they all look pretty good, but I'm liking minus one the best of all of them. It looks smoother and a little cleaner. The corners are a bit sharper. I'm going to use minus one. All right. Let's go ahead and update our profile in Creality Print 5. Okay, so I picked negative 1 as my choice for the smoothest top surface. So now we've got to apply that to our profile. So like before, I'm going to come up. I'm going to click on where it says PLA in my case. And I'm going to hit Edit. And we're coming down to the flow. And... There you see the 0.931 that we've entered before. So our formula is still basically the same where we're taking the old flow rate multiplied by 100 plus the modifier, negative one in this case, divided by 100. So our old flow rate is 0.931 instead of uh, 0.98 like it originally was in our first pass. So I'm gonna take 0.931 and I'm going to multiply that by 99, which is, you know, 100 plus negative 1 is 99. And then I'm going to divide by 100. So my result, see, 0.931 times 99 gives me 92.169. Divided by 100, I am going with 0.922. I'm rounding up. So for my flow rate, I'm going to go 0 0.922. And I always click on an extra box because if you'll notice this save just doesn't 
become enabled until you click somewhere else. So you can either hit the tab key or just click somewhere and then hit save. You'll get the message telling you that the profile already exists. Yes, we're going to overwrite it. I'll close that out. And I'm going to come up. File, new project, and back and prepare. What I want to do is I just verify that it's there, 0.922. So for my Ender 3 V3 SE, my flow rate, flow ratio is 0.922. That's all there is to it. Dialing in this setting can make a big difference in your print quality. Don't be afraid to run this calibration. And don't forget, it helps to dial in your temperature first with the temperature tower. Remember, the perfect flow ratio can depend on various factors such as the type of filament, print speed, and sometimes even the 3D model itself. It's always a good idea to run some test prints and adjust accordingly. Now, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I have their link posted in the description. If you could, give it a click to show support for those who support us. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.